Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with OBIEE. This is the fourth and final chapter in importing BSO as based databases into the repository. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And at this point in time, I don't believe I really need any other changes for my BSO cube. So I'm simply going to pick it up and drag it over into the business model and mapping layer to create my business model. And now my sample cube is there. And if I open it up, I'll see my basic database inside. There it is. So a couple of things that look a little bit different here is that OBI breaks out the hierarchies and kind of puts them toward the top in our business model. And if you were working with relational data, you know that you have to create all these hierarchies. SBase does it for you. So that's why it's the, the so easy. I usually tell people it's, it's one of the easiest data sources to work with. Here's my basic column where I flattened out my measures. So let's take a look. There they are. Notice that they're gold. Measures show as gold. Hierarchies, again, up above. And then down here, I have my logical tables with logical columns. This is where if I needed to add some calculations, in particular for a BSO database, you might want to add a to date column in there somewhere because by default, it does not come along for the ride. So by default, we don't have to date. But really, at this point in time, our database is good. I'm simply going to pick up sample and go ahead and drag it over to the presentation layer. Now this will create the subject area that users will see when they are creating reports. So if I want to rename things, I would really do it over here in my business model and mapping layer. Over here, the last chance I have to clean things up, I may add some additional presentation tables, or I may snip a few things out that I don't want users to see. If for some reason I didn't want them to see this payroll column, I'd go ahead, select it, right click, and I would simply click delete. Now they can no longer see it, but yet it remains over here in my business model. So at some future date, if, oh, payroll data is needed, I can simply drag it from the business model over here to the subject area in the basic folder. So down and dirty, super simple. Let's go ahead, file, save this. We'll go ahead and run a global consistency check just to make sure there are no errors. At this point in time, I'm getting a message that my new business model is all right, consistent, and yes, I'm going to mark it available for queries. All right, so now take a look up here. I know this screen looks kind of scary, and this is um, a lot of action going on in this particular repository file. So fortunately, uh, none of these warnings apply to us, which is great. But notice that we have no errors. That's really probably even the most critical thing. Because if you have a repository that has errors, your BI server cannot get restarted. It will hang. So you always want to make sure that you definitely address any errors here. You can choose to ignore the warnings. If these were warnings on our sources, I would definitely clean them up. But they are not, so I'm simply going to close this window. And our file is saved. And now I'm going to go ahead over to the BI web client. And notice that OB is telling me, hey, you're going to have to restart in order for your changes to take effect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start up my browser. And just so you know, normally, especially with .9, Firefox or Chrome browsers tend to work a little bit better. It uh, can get a little bit hung up at times and different things in IE just because IE doesn't always have the flash drives and things that you need for the graphs. And so it's recommended to use Firefox or Chrome. I'm going to log in to OB. And depending, of course, on your preferences, you'll see the home page. So it just depends where you want to go. 
Where I'm going to go, because I'm an administrator, is I'm going to head right over to administration. So if you're an administrator, you will see this administration link above the global header area there. I'm going to click that. I'm going to show you a little cheat that you can do instead of having to kind of always stop at the BI server and all of that. You can always try first to just reload underneath maintenance and troubleshooting here on the administration page. So I'm going over to maintenance troubleshooting. I'm going to click on reload files and metadata. And this is basically going to reload my active RPD file. So again, not recommended in a production environment. You kind of want to schedule that downtime to get things back up and running. But here in our little test world, we can do that kind of thing. Now to show you what it looks like to a user, I'm going to go ahead and say new analysis. And I'm going to select my new sample area that I just created. It's a BSO cube. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here on the left hand side subject area you can see are all of the presentation tables. You can see my flattened measures. That's how they look. Here's my year dimension. So you can see that's what that looks like. Here's the hierarchy. So that's how it's presented to your users. Okay, and we changed product to be value. So let's take a look at how that looks. So you can see product. I know it looks kind of strange because it really just has this product SKU. That was the lowest level. So I just wanted to show you that instead of seeing, you know, generation one product and some of the other things that you see here, we just have the combination. So let's take a look at year because the year still should have its no, they've renamed everything there. So I'm trying to find a place to show you what generations look like, but it looks like we've done a good job. Here we go, package type, which is an attribute dimension. But there you can see what it looks like if you don't rename your dimensions, okay? So again, flatten measures. That's fine. If you do use names, much easier for your end users. So I want to just go back over to the BI admin tool for a minute. I just want to show you a couple of final things before we wrap up our discussions here. So again, I'm going to first maximize the window so it's nice and big. And then from the file menu, I'm going to again open the repository in online mode, enter the necessary user IDs and passwords, And what I wanted to show you was a couple of things from the Tools menu under Options. So let's take a look there. There is right here a little checkbox that says Skip Gen 1 Levels in S-Base Drag and Drop Actions. So what that does, because think about it, Gen 1 is usually just the dimension header. So unless you're looking to get some grand totals from that, something like that, Gen 1, gen, generally speaking, will just confuse users. So if you don't want Gen 1 anywhere in your business model or in your presentation layer, you can use your tools options to go ahead and set that option. So I wanted to show you that. I also just wanted to go up to the Manage menu, show you variables. S-based substitution variables are always brought into the database when you import. They use something called an initialization block. That's how the repository connects to the data source and knows to bring these objects in. Under dynamic is where you'll find those repository variables. And here you can see the ones that we brought in with localhost. So the syntax is basically the server name, the application, the database, and the substitution variable name. Once it makes a connection to SBase, these will get populated, as you see here with the default initializer. Also, if you have substitution variables that are only application specific, it would be the server name, application, and then the variable name. And if they're global, meaning they're available to all applications, it would simply be the server name, colon, and then the substitution variable name. You do want to rename these because localhost, what happens when I move it over to my production environment, it's not called localhost. So I usually change this to just sbase as the server name. 
and then I'm good to go. I also normally rename as much of my substitution, my initialization block rather that I can. I right click and go to properties and I tidy that up as well. And because I'm online, I have to check my objects out. So again, I might change this to something else, but you do have to, when you move this, edit your data source so you're pointing to the right server. So with those couple of things, hopefully I showed you that it's very easy to import an S-Space BSO database. Thanks for watching.